I, I come back to this uh, sentence that compared to what you have today, I mean, if you're a huge company, uh, eventually you, you end up using SAP or Microsoft or you have to decide at some point if, if you want to be efficient. And then you're actually quite locked in at the moment and that's the normal situation in IT today, I think. Um, but let's turn it around. Let's assume everything is not locked in and harmonized and interoperable uh, and, uh, and open. That would be nice. Then we could do actually focus on business and so forth. But uh, to get to that point, um, I mean like the HTTP IP situation, um, to get there, there's a business for all these companies to do. And I mean, if you as a customer either go open source or buy one of the big companies' um, solution, that's, I, I think you're quite aware of what you're doing. And you pay the money because it's worth it. And then, then you're sitting there with one provider and thinking, well, I would like to move now, but it's kind of hard. Let's have two providers. And that's, that's double work today, I think. It's very hard. I mean, it's like uh, maintaining, um, okay, you can have a Hotmail account account and a Google Mail account at the same time, but maybe you don't want to merge them. Uh, so it's double work and sometimes it pays off. Um, it makes you more available. I mean, if one company goes down, the other one is still up. But um, um, you, it's, a, it's a question about cost. Is it worth it? I mean, and then you do it. Based on what, what we have learned on with enterprise customers, I have one word, which is integration. I mean, can you really, today, can you really uh, buy email services from somewhere, communication services from somewhere, and, and so on, without any integration? And if you need integration, who is going to be in charge of that integration? Okay, and let's say you want to move one component from one place to another, from one supplier to another supplier. Again, who is in charge of that integration? And you have several different systems integrated together. Who is in charge that they will work together? Or should something go wrong, who is going to help? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, vendor locking, I, as Orke points out, th this is uh, everyone has always talked about the, the difficulties with vendor locking, but uh, at the same time, it's many corporations uh, are locked in or in practice uh, use just a few vendors and so on. It, it's been going on, in, in SAP uh, is a good example, and there are others, a number of them, of course. But it's one, one uh, thing that is, might be new here. And that uh, taking the research uh, uh, perspective. So, for example, I can mention an example in uh, Netherlands now. The uh, the uh, research network organization in Netherlands they have made a framework agreement with a large uh, cloud provider. It's Google uh, about uh, use of the Google all the Google apps and Google environments for uh, Dutch universities. So it means that the Dutch universities can use uh, all the Google apps. They have to individually agree on this and pay the fee, but there is a framework agreement. And then to use all the Google apps, and so basically all researchers and students in, in Netherlands have their data, could end up with that they, they have all their documents, uh, and of course people will start to uh, couple their uh, uh, laboratory information systems to this and so on. So almost every data there, research that would end up in a, uh, with a cloud provider. Uh, I have not made up my mind yet if this is a problem or not. Uh, but it could very much be. What would we think if we, one could very, th this is typically a uh, thing that CEC, my own organization here, could do. We could uh, make such a framework agreement with Microsoft or someone else, for example, and say that uh, all Finnish universities adopt this. We use the Hakka Federation as authentication, perfect thing. 
uh, everyone, every user is there already, and uh, then people start to, to use all the Office applications on the web instead of uh, having in their PCs. We save a lot of money and everyone is happy. Uh, but this means that all research information, uh, public and non-public, will end up with Microsoft. Now we have an agreement, and we're not in the situation as pointed out before, without an agreement, we, we don't even own the data. But still, uh, is this a situation that would make the Finnish <coughs> government comfortable or not? Or do we need to arrange something specific here that we are in total control of and not give control to a third party? I, uh, I have no clear answer. I've not made up my mind yet, but maybe the audience can help me <laughs> or the panel. <laughs> Clearly, there, there is a lot of competition uh, from the uh, hearts and minds of the academic institutions. Uh, a few weeks ago, I visited Berkeley Laboratories in San Francisco, and they had gotten uh, the uh, Google suite for free for all the researchers of uh, some 12,000. So, uh, uh, and, uh, and they, they clearly said that it was a financial decision to accept is that with or without a contract? No? Yeah, there is a, they, they had a very <laughs> clear contract, and Microsoft was there as a competitor. But it's interesting to hear what Microsoft thinks about this. <laughs> in, in my opinion, the short answer to, to that particular question, should you try to avoid vendor lock-in from a, a customer's perspective? I think, I, I think, the, the more practical use of the resources that, that, that you would use for trying to avoid quote-unquote vendor lock-in would be a lot better placed if you really thought about finding systems that are actually interoperable with each other. I don't, I don't think um, I, I, about five years ago, I was involved with in, in quite a few um, Java, Java cases, um, and somebody said to me that it, that it's very important that that you can use Java, and and you can actually change the platform that you run these Java backend applications on. And I asked him a question: So, how many times has anybody actually done that? and I got a pretty blank look. So instead of using resources on, on, things, on things like that, I think it would be much more, more important to try to figure out um, that, that we're gonna be using systems that are actually interoperable with, with um, each other from a customer's perspective. Now, if I look at it from, from our perspective, um, I think our, instead of trying to, trying to um, all agree on the full stack, everything should be interoperable with everybody else's systems. I think even our resources or Google's resources or whoever's resources are providing uh, services in the cloud uh, are much better placed at defining interfaces between systems, clear cut interfaces. You mentioned the, the example of email, having an, an email account on Hotmail or having an email account on Google. That's grand. You can actually use probably just one protocol to access all of those. It, it may be POP, which is rather simplistic, but you do have that kind of, a, kind of an interface that is agreed between all of these vendors. So I think our, even our vendors' resources should be put on, on, defining, on defining these type of interfaces and then uh, allowing us to innovate underneath those because that will foster innovation um, as well. This is, this is a very long-winded winded answer, but uh, I think the more, more important thing is to look at interoperability and standards to a certain extent. Than, than looking at everything being uniform and, and so that you can interoperate everything with everything else. Yes, uh, 
as everybody has agreed here, uh, you can't really avoid vendor locking in any, any of the systems, and indeed it, that can't be avoided in, in cloud services either. However, the vendor locking can be very different in different kinds of services. If you are if you are using a software as a service kind of cloud service, it's, it's very different locking if than if you are just buying an uh, infra uh, uh, platform uh, that where you are running your own applications and uh, and. Uh, when it comes to software as a service kind of services, which I presume most are talking about when they are talking about cloud, cloud services, in, uh, at least referring to this question. Um, in, when it, in cloud computing, you, you do have a kind of specific aspect of this vendor locking that, that, that you don't have your own access to the data because it's on someone else's servers. And, and, and on contractual level, you should make sure that you have right to obtain the data in one copy in structured form in, in that you can easily transfer to another service. Even you will lose functionality, you will lose a lot of kind of uh, uh, tacit knowledge on the, on the system, but you will get your data out of there. And, and there are a lot of cloud services, software as a service kind of services where you actually can't take your data out as one kind of big, big chunk. And we have had some cases where where customers have had difficulties. You know, they should kind of take the data out one by one. And if you have an organization of 100 people using the service for one year, you have such amount of data that you can't take it out one by one. You have to have some kind of one easy way to yeah, get it away from there. So if you can't take your data out, then you are 100% locked in. You don't, you don't have a way out. <coughs> 